to hits at the same time you'll be inspired by this story gear expo is absolutely on fire pensado awards the same dave is swamped in judging it is busy as hell you're at the place it's pensado's place Like, <laughs> I, I always screw it up, don't I? Yeah, My guitar it is a harmonica. I, in rehearsals I, yesterday. Yeah, exactly. I, I got to practice again. So much going on, you picked a good time to stop by. Um, I'm going to cut this thing short on my end because there's get so right much to thing, <laughs> right so many this. things we've got to talk about. But good things for you guys. So. And you too, really, because what yeah. we haven't talked a lot about is how Fab Factory is getting there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we have to do something on the show about Fab Factory. Uh, I'll explain the Fab It's Factory. hard to get the acoustics right at that bridge under cold water right. on the 101 <laughs> where I'm currently... Uh, where you're currently no, recording. No, I'm, I'm at the wonderful Echo Bar with Bob Horn and Eric, and uh, they treated me great. Shall we get to it? Yeah. Cool, let's do that. Hey, gang, always great to see you. Thanks for your enduring support. Good stuff happening, and these are the folks who help make it happen. They are, of course, Vintage King, the Blackbird Academy, Isotope, Avid, Lander, Fab Factory that we alluded to, DTS, Recording Connection and Studio 202 DC. Let's take a quick moment to recognize the passing of, of an absolute icon. Um, the reason it's relevant to the show is Muhammad Ali was always around music and really, in my opinion, and Dave's opinion, had the soul of an artist. Mm -hmm. When you think about his creativity in the ring and his passion outside of the ring, it's very similar to musicians and you guys and how we operate in our life. Um, I had the pleasure of, when I was a record exec, my boss was close to Muhammad Ali and he would be in our shop fairly regularly. And I gotta tell you, he was just super playful. Um, and what he liked to do is prank you. And so um, this was, he had probably been diagnosed with Parkinson's about early stage, and he would come up to you really quiet, and, and Dick would go, meet Muhammad Ali, the champ, and you're in awe, and you're just standing there with your hands down, and he would go, wow, wow, and you would just go, oh, my God, like. Like I just did? Exactly right, but it was Muhammad Ali doing it. Uh -huh. The other thing he did is he would carry a fake thumb. And so oh, he would so do cool. tricks, magic, he'd pull scars out, pull your thumb off, and he just liked to make you laugh and so on and so forth. Um, what's fascinating in my view, and we won't stay on this long, is you don't understand the impact of somebody sometimes till they pass. Mm -hmm. And when you think about what he did to move yeah. the meter. I, mean, I was alive then, and it was, it was <sighs> talk about the courage to go against the stream, the courage to stand for your, your convictions, proving that you could be yourself and be successful. Uh, he, he put an entire community on his back and just took it to new heights, you and, know? And that community may have been the world, yeah. actually. It's, yeah. it's couched in different frames, but, but really yeah. amazing. And, and just, you know, the, the gods and serendipity, I had also the pleasure of working with Maurice White, which is no surprise to you guys. Maurice and Mohammed were diagnosed within a month of each other of Parkinson's. They died at the same age, 74, in the same year. Amazing. When you told me that, that, that kind of... Two different loop, treatments. Ma Maurice's treatment was, he, had, he got a neurological pass. He didn't go through the same things. Um, but it just is about, I got to watch greatness that wasn't hampered by disease or limitations. They, they, they went past those kind of physical limitations. And, and that's a lesson for all of us, don't you think? A hundred percent. Can I go back one thing you said sure. about, about music and Ali? Um, um, everything in life, it seems like, as I'm getting more and more into music um, and this journey, has a rhythm and a timing. And, and his rhythm and timing, and don't, don't boxers have a, a, a drill called rhythm and timing? Absolutely. It's like everything has rhythm and timing in it, doesn't it? If you go to a speed bag or focus mitts and you just listen, 
because Charmer and I do it sort of an amateur basis. It won't be long on this, but it's yeah, yeah. and really good boxers can emphasize things. If you watch Floyd Mayweather do Focus Miss with his dad or something like that, it is a percussion solo. And you, you just see that. Or when you see somebody shuffle uh -huh. and they work that into combat, that goes past just instinct. There's something there that's artful about it. It's, it's just truly I'm going to change the subject. Do you ever... Do you ever find yourself chewing gum in rhythm to the radio? Uh, I do, <laughs> and it weird? screws me up. <laughs> and the, yeah, it'll screw me up. <laughs> I used to try to chew gum and play basketball, and I couldn't do it. Anyways, thank you for indulging us on in that. It's really important that we recognize people like that. There's a certain amazing harmony in both his life and what we got to experience in his life and what he's contributed to us. So rest in peace, champ. G-O-A-T applies to you the greatest of all time, for sure. Moving on. Uh, Gear Expo. Off the chain, you better believe it. Yeah. It's this Saturday, June 11th, 10.30 to 4 p.m. at the gorgeous, gorgeous Vintage King facility in Hipster, downtown L.A. You know what we got? Hitmaker's panel, Bieber's guy, Minaj's guy, Panic at the Disco, Sia, uh, Vice President of a &R, who's just a badass rock drummer. That's going to be in the morning panel. In the afternoon, our Electronica panel, Dedalia, Sidebrain, DJ Malski, going to be off the charts. going to be some demos too. Some DJs will let them get a little bit loose. Um, in the afternoon, our Flicks panel, the guy who did Superman and Batman and Captain America and Pitch Perfect, um, the guy who does Last Call to Carson Daly, the lady, the doyen we call her, who oversees East West Studios where they do a lot uh, our of girl. our girl Candace Stewart. It is going to be a ball. A bunch of legends are coming through. Yesterday, Dave and I and Sean Gore spent a bunch of time with Manny Malikin. You know how bad he is. He's going to be there. CLA is going to be there. Ross Hogarth is coming down. Gavin Lurson and more and more and more. Those are all just the octagon match. That's just the, that's right. That's I mean, right. MMA, baby. Yeah. Uh, the A stands for audio. I don't know what the M <laughs> stands for, so we'll figure that out. Manny American audio. Manny American audio. <laughs> that's right. Uh, so they're coming to meet you. Um, we're going to give away prizes. Recording Connection is going to give away scholarships. Oh, wow. You're going to get some Learn from the Legends opportunities. You're going to, the hot Avid Doc, we're going to get you. The Ableton Suite. Isotope's going to give away stuff. Audionamics is going to give away stuff. Pensado Swag. We've got that. We've got this. We've got stuff. It's going to look good on you. Um, selfie boost, viral things, all kinds of goodies. Food trucks, beer. Ladies, please attend. Understand that please, audio please. is a place for you to be. Your contributions are important. It'd be really boring if it's a sausage fest, So, but we want you there for reasons <laughs> having to do with your growth and your career. Come on down. Where do you go? And it's not too late to sign up, but it is packed and you want to get there. Mm -hmm. Go to right underneath me, thegearexpo.com. Look at all the vendors and companies who will be there. Enter. Come on down. This stuff will help with your craft and we get a chance to meet you and sign something and take a picture with mm -hmm. you, and we can't wait. June 11th, 10.30 to 4.30, get in there early, have a ball. Wouldn't you say an accurate description about this event is mm -hmm. it, it, it does have a certain intimacy to it mm -hmm. that I like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's not so overwhelming. Yeah. It's not like the award show. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's a block party, Yeah, and it's a hang. It's real so, cool. Yeah, it's real cool, so real we'll cool. see you there. Uh, my friend, I haven't seen you for a while because you've been busy judging. You getting close to the end of it? Yeah, we got the swimsuit contest left. Okay, <laughs> this is the Indaba <laughs> Converse Rubber Tracks contest. Oh um, uh, man, whew, I've been judging for weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of submissions, which is a good thing. And the next one, we want to top this. But uh, as I said uh, earlier in the week, uh, earlier in the month, uh, the submissions are incredible. You guys have taken it to another level. It requires a lot of careful listening. Yeah. Make sure we're going to get it right. Yeah. And um, and we tell them all next week. So oh, really? Cool. Yeah, we do. Ooh, sorry. I'm going to have to cancel some mixes so you can finish listening. <laughs> you know what? You got to... What's weird, Herb, is like, think about judging, and there's a certain point where where you, you, you just can't give it the, the attention you want. You know, mm -hmm. like after about 10 in a row, your mind wanders a little bit, so I have to stop. Then yeah, I have to right. clear my head. And refocus. And then, and then I notice that, that sometimes... The ones that I, I do later on, I'm a little more critical than the ones I did earlier, so I have to listen to everything again mm. in reverse order. That, that's how you try and get it 
to try and get it all right. Yeah, know? I've, I've watched you do that with mixes. Got to be right. Well, that's the they beauty of, of why we do it. Um, your work is being paid attention to. Um, we take it seriously, as does Indaba, as do Converse River Tracks. A lot of talent. And a lot of t you guys are kicking ass. Good for you. Good on you. Announcements next week. Um, and finally, the big dance is set. It is the Pensado Awards, Saturday, August 20th, on the Sony Movie Lot. DJ Derek, mixed by Ali, he's a host. CLA, Chris Lord Algae, he's a host. Gavin Lurson, he's a host. And a whole ton of hit makers and hot rodders have reached out already. They all want to come. Uh, it's going to be a blast. We're going to have more information for you next week. Ticket price is only 50 bucks. We try to make it easy for you to do. Go to PinsadaWars.com for all the information you need. See that right there? PinsadaWars.com. You can sign up there. We'll post hotel information, other kinds of things that you need. It's going to be a great night. It's a night where the stars gather underneath the stars. You want to be there. Cool? Now. Let's meet the happy Hungarian who puts a hurting on a hand roll. <laughs> he goes oh, by the name of... <laughs> I can go for a hand roll right now. <laughs> I, we're going for a hand roll right after the show, no question. <laughs> that was especially roll. for you, giving our hand roll fetish. I dig it, I dig it. What's right. happening, man? Whew, crazy week. We have Gear Expo this Saturday. I can't wait. It's... Let, let me ask you two questions. So you're a 22, you'll be 23 in July? Yep. So what does the live event do for somebody your age as opposed to watching the show? Does, is there a difference? If you're, if you're my age, you're likely still in school for audio or just finishing. The odds are you may not have found a place to really call your home. So events like these oh, make fair. it so you can find a home. Like maybe, maybe there's an engineer that you've been looking up to and you haven't been able to connect with and maybe he's looking for an intern or an engineer and you can fill that role. So these places are really good just to network, meet people your age, just overall move forward with your career. Well, well. Chango, that was amazing, man. Chango. Let's hear from Well Chango. done. Chango. Uh, man. Pretty impressive. That was I guess very impressive. Question. That was perfect. Second question. Perfect. perfect. So, and just coming out of school, yeah. schools are important. You know, we have a big focus on education. Yeah. You've had a chance to travel with us and so on and so yeah. forth. The July class of Blackbird Academy is filling up. Yeah. And, um, you know, they have international accreditation and veteran accreditation. So you've gone down and actually seen that yeah. school. There are lots of good schools. We know that we think this is, if not the best school, certainly one of the very best. What is the Blackbird thing, if you had a chance to be there, that you think is special? It's the fact that the, all the information you get is from people that are active in the industry. And they're, not, and, they're, and they're not just active, maybe like they had a hit in the 80s. These are guys still killing it today. <laughs> mm -hmm. I know Blackbird wasn't around when I went to school or when I started college, but if it would have, it definitely would have been a strong consideration for me. I mean, there really isn't other, any other choice if you can do it. Like Blackbird is pretty much, I, I mean, I, if, you, if you want to go down the engineering space, I agree, no, no better way. I agree, I, And I, I think that the idea of the passionate staff the location to one of the best studios in the world, yeah. that connection, once you walk on the Blackbird lot, by the time you come off, you're coming off with education, likely a job, and a lot of connections. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, it's it's hard to find that intensity. I mean, we go down there, we get inspired from going. Well, I learn more than anybody when I go down there. Absolutely. So guys, look, Blackbird Academy, July class, filling up. Go to karma at theblackbirdacademy.com. She'll get you all the information. You know we preach it. We preach it because there's results. You'll end up with a national network of people who are placed around the globe. You'll end up with an incredible placement service. Your education will be nuts. You will meet people. Do it. It's a serious, serious career booster. Again, karma at theblackbirdacademy.com. Good stuff for you. Now, my brother, what's our ITL for this week? Man, I got a new... Uh plug-in, guitar amp plug-in that Barisi told me about, uh -huh. and I'm, I figured out some ways to use it on synthesizers and everything but guitars, oh, so cool. check this out. Roll it. Hey guys, I've, I've always used uh, guitar pedals to mix, particularly in the 90s. I used a lot of guitar pedals, Sans Amp. Um, a lot of my big, big records that you heard had uh, the real Sans Amp on vocals. Um, I Get the Party Started by Pink, that was the real Sans Amp. Um, I got that idea from Dave Way and I've, I've used it ever since. But now we've got virtual amps, so why not try using virtual amps for different things? This is a song and a track I got from Dan Chase, great producer engineer. 
the artist's name is J6. I love this sound. Check it out. Big and ominous sounding. So I thought, well, let me see if I can make it better. So I, I'm using uh, the Scuffum uh, S Gear virtual guitar amp. <clears throat> According to Joe Barisi, this is uh, this is one of the better ones, and I agree 100%. I have fallen in love with this. So I'm using a kind of a clean, driven. I'm guessing Texas driven probably means either Billy Gibbons or uh, Steve Ray Vaughan. So I'm sending to this. Now watch this. Let me exaggerate it. It's a guitar amp, so we can we can do some neat things. Um, we can add a little more bass, add a little more mid, make it a little darker. We can take we can take advantage of some of the effects that we have and that sort of thing. Now, it, you don't have to just use it on synthesizers. Um, of course, you can use it on guitars. That's obvious. But you can use the same concept on vocals, background vocals. But I like it on synths to give it that that just something that makes it pop out of the mix a little bit. Check it out. It's probably not fair on this particular guest because he's become almost like a little brother. Um, we are always impressed with perseverance and inspiration and aspiration. Um, and Vincent Berry II is somebody who always shares his story. So when I talked to you at the top about from homeless to hits and it happened at the same time, this is a guy who will inspire you is also just killing it and now about to reap the rewards of that kind of perseverance and long-term plan we are excited to welcome to the desk the one the only from detroit looking like day toi mm -hmm. vincent berry the second what up man What's up, you good i am I'm good, awesome. good 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 we What's like up, this guy huh uh, he, a lot a he's lot. not from detroit because he's not wearing one color head to toe like, <laughs> <laughs> is this they like call, a new detroit they call those walking suits detroit. back yeah, east like <laughs> yeah. Yeah. my friend from kentucky said man you should wear a walking suit to the awards i said what's that he said this is one color one block I was like, ah, maybe next time. So, but anyways, fire away. Hey, man, I, I can't stop listening to uh, Lemonade by Beyonce. One of awesome. my favorite songs is Sandcastle. Oh, that's uh, awesome, bro. You wrote that. How did it? How did that come about? I mean, how do you um, start a song with Beyonce? No, it, it's awesome, man. You know, most times, you know, when you're writing, a lot of people try to write songs for an artist, and I think that's like the worst approach. I, I agree. You know, mm. like we've seen that a lot. You know, just like kind of pick Beyonce and go listen to through all her songs and just because what happens is you take all of her melodies subconsciously the mm -hmm. music is about a hear is about hearing and feeling so mm -hmm. you're taking her melodies you're taking even the concepts from what she used to write about mm -hmm. and trying to project that on a woman who's 12 13 years married right right you know I mean it's a whole different place in her life you right. know, she was 18 19 singing those songs so you know I don't think you even try to write a song for her I think you just try to be honest Mm. And the lyrics, you know, and just great point. Hope that the song is in line because you got well, what we have to factor in is that there is a vision already in place right. for all of these albums. Right. You know, conversations, intense conversations with a team of people talking about how this project should come out. Right. And you're just hoping that your song fits within that plan. Mm. I mean, very, very rarely mm. would your song determine the plan mm -hmm. or shift the plan mm -hmm. or make them scrap albums and all the stuff we hear about projects. Right. Very rarely is that going to happen. So most times you just want an incredible song that you can actually project. So I think what I did was, you know, I wrote about my life, but when I was thinking about her, I looked through my catalog and I thought about all the stuff in the blogs. Mm. I thought about all the stuff in the... Uh, 
even the the tabloids, even if it's not true, sure. she has to, as a woman, she has to feel away right. about having to read that. And right. I can imagine the kind of conversation that would initiate. I mean, imagine the conversations as a dating man I've had to have over Twitter and Instagram. I've, I mean, I've had them too. Come on, bro. So you know, Woo. some tabloids Woo. and you know, Becky with the good air. You got all kind of conversations. <laughs> that's right. That was established. You know, so I just took all that stuff. I'm like, man, that's all might work. Right. I would have. I would have bet everything I own that she wrote those lyrics, but you you wrote the lyrics. Well, I co-wrote the lyrics, so, so you know. But she, you, she only wrote the last half of the song. So even, even before before she got, she received a full song. So ultimately, um, you know, when I'm teaching songwriting, uh, uh, Dave and her, I'm teaching kids to listen, mm -hmm. which is the fundamental part of the whole process, that mm -hmm. you have to be an incredible listener. Mm -hmm. And this song really gives me a platform to speak about that because I'm, I've written a bunch of songs you know, since then we've placed about 40 or 50 songs. But so you've with cheated this song, on a lot of women. No, well, no, not really. <laughs> you know, I, you know, I've been cheated on quite a bit. You know? So, the, so you made all that up? <laughs> well, no, no. Sandcastle, Sandcastle was more than just about cheating. It was more about me determining that I was walking away, mm -hmm. and I'm not coming back. See, wow. Beyonce made it a very good thing. Her last verse of, you know, share me or show me your scars, and I'll stay around. That, that's not Brilliant. what I wrote. That's what that's what she wrote. That's not what me and Malik wrote. You know uh, what? She put that there just to kind of save it and not make it as harsh. Okay. You know, um, so I walk in the studio. Malik says, "I have this 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 song I wrote for Tiana Taylor, uh -huh. and it says we build sandcastles mm. that washed away." And I said, "No, nah, bro, I think that's for Beyonce." Mm. From the first day, moment, first moment I heard so the words. So you called it. You, you yeah, put it no out doubt. There. From the first moment. Wow. You know, um, I said, "Come to the piano." And he's going over the lyrics that he had, and I'm finding the key. You know, I, I think he was kind of singing it, you know, in like a A flat, like mm -hmm. a real lower, lower register than what it is now. And I'm like, that's too low for me to sing it, so I, I brought it to B flat, yeah, yeah right. and just kind of carved the chords and constructed them, and and then I, I sang it and wrote the second verse, mm -hmm. um, and the third verse. And so when she got it, the third verse was kind of harsh. It's like, you know, I don't care about no dishes. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's it's really like I'm. All this stuff that was in this house is gone, mm. and I don't like that it's gone, but mm -hmm. it's gone, and I gotta move on, mm -hmm. that kind of thing, mm -hmm. you know. And I guess, you know, so I met a friend uh, who came into the session at Universal when, when me and Malik wrote the song. Mm -hmm. And most times when you don't, you're doing a co write, you want the song to come on the first day. Right. And sometimes it's not gonna come on the That's first day, right. or so the that, second, or the fifth day. Expand on that a little bit. Well, you know, when you, co you meet somebody, right, you go to Universal, and they and before they sign you, they're gonna try to put you with their team. Right. Or you go to Warner or Sony, they're gonna put you with writers they've already published, just to see if you have it. I mean, because just getting their attention is gonna come from what you already did. Right. Keeping their attention is the ability to do it on call. Absolutely. Every Absolutely. moment in the room, Absolutely. boom! All the oh shoot, this kid Absolutely. keep bringing records, really and all, just like that, yes, you're indeed. able to create a brand for yourself that you're actually here professionally and delivering. So when I work with Malik, you know, I'm homeless at this time, by the way, you know, and you know, working with this brother, Amazing. you know, he's full of wisdom and full of knowledge right. and full of information, and so, you know. Again, as a writer, you have to be a listener. Right. So I'm, my job, when I come into a room to ask, what, what do you do? I'm the listener. That's my job, you know, because mm. I'm listening to everything. I'm listening for the powerful lines, whether they come from the kids or the homeless man or anybody, you know, because those are the songs. The songs are coming from the people. Mm. I can sit and write a bunch of stuff myself, mm -hmm. but that's for me, mm. you know. And that, I mean, how many people really in the world share my perspective? Mm -hmm. It's really not a lot of people. So, so. So That's at, interesting. When you, exactly. And when you're in that process, your ears are yes. the portal, yes. right? And then you have to have a self-editing mechanism inside. So a guy named John Brahini, I believe that's how you say his name, yeah. he wrote a book Amazing called guy. The Craft and Business of Songwriting. Mm -hmm. And in his book, he suggests that what the songwriter has to focus on developing is what he called the songwriter's consciousness. And I think that is that internal Editor, checks and balances right. yeah, yeah, or yeah. editor that you're talking about yeah. because that only develops as you're writing songs and you keep writing songs and you you develop within yourself this this checks and balances to weed out the stuff that's not as good right and you only get that from working so right. you couple that stream of thought from right. john to what malcolm gladwell had to say hmm. about developing mm -hmm. your ability to write or any gift sure any talent it takes ten thousand hours that's right so if you couple that 10,000 hours with focusing on listening and the developing outlier. that song, right? come on, man. Yeah, absolutely. You put those together, I think you find what you need to, to get to the records. 
Do you walk around with a notebook and, and take notes uh, like a lot brother, of songwriters? I am a, you know, people laugh at me, you know, but I don't steal anything. I mean, I don't. You know, I don't, I don't steal anything. And when I say that, when I get a concept and I'm, I'm inspired by somebody, whether it's the, I was inspired by a lady at a Clark at a gas station. Mm -hmm. And uh, she said a song. I said, oh, my God, that's a smash. You know, mm -hmm. everybody know that's mm -hmm. what they know me for because I'm listening for songs. Mm -hmm. I'm never not writing mm -hmm. except for on the Sabbath. You know, but other than that, mm -hmm. I'm writing, mm -hmm. you know. So um, I had to write her name down, address, phone number, email, because I'm every song that comes to me from somebody, I believe the most high sent that person to to deliver that to me. Mm. And so I include them on the copyright. So with this Beyonce song specifically, mm. that's the beauty of this song because how it got to Beyonce is the miracle. Because, you know, anybody who knows anything about the business, you know it's full of politics. As a matter of fact, skip the business. Life is full of politics, sure. right? Mm -hmm. It's all right. relationships yep. from the bottom to the top, you mm -hmm. know. So with this particular record, I never did a publishing deal. I'm still unpublished now. Right. And, you know, moving around LA has been very difficult. But with this record, I had a friend of mine who heard the record and the girl started crying the day I met her. This is how we become friends. Right. The day I meet her, I play the record, and she starts crying. Oh, my God, no, this song really touched me. You know, can I sing it in a showcase? And I typically don't let my songs go, like most writers, but I said, you know what? I write my songs to touch people. Mm -hmm. And when I was writing this song, I was crying the way she's crying now. Mm -hmm. You know, so mm -hmm. I said, you know what? Maybe I should just be kind and let her sing it. You right. know, I said, well, if you promise not to lie and mm -hmm. steal the song from me, say you wrote it or do none of that crazy stuff, I'll let you sing the record. Right. So I let her sing the record. The next day she goes into BMG where she's published and Teresa uh, is there, who yep. is Beyonce's manager. Yep. And when Teresa heard, um, she's hearing all the songs, she's telling everybody you know, Beyonce's ready to work Right. about a year ago. And she's like, a year and a half ago now, she's like, uh, you know, um, play the record. So they're playing records and apparently it's not what she wants. Is this Teresa Love of Era Yes, sir. Yes. And so she, she's listening for records and it's not what she wants. And apparently Mundian says, well, you know, it's the young lady's name. Sure. I have a record. I did not write it. But wow. I think it's exactly what Beyonce should be singing. Wow. So, and did she sing it? No, no, she didn't sing it. She played she my played version it. of it. Mm -hmm. And when she played my version, Teresa started crying. Oh, wow. You know, and... Teresa needed the song, and she's like, well, he's unpublished, too, and she lost her mind at that point. Wow, you know? of course. Just like, oh, my God, you know. Wow. So we reconnected and was able to really build a very, really, really, I mean, she's a powerful woman. She I love her. Full of love, her. love and full mm -hmm. of light, full of grace. She and, is. I mean, I, I agree. I mean, just, just a little bit of insight as mm -hmm. it relates to the heart that her and Beyonce have. Mm -hmm. I agree to a co-producer credit mm -hmm. on this song, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. and, but when I sent in the splits, I sent in my name, my company. I'm trying to build my company, you know, sure. and all that. And she said, well, could you take the company off because I want your name on the same line as mine? And she, I didn't know what that meant. Wow. But she actually gave me a producer credit, wow. which is very different than a co-producer credit. So, you know, that's just the kind of people that, that they I, are. I, I, I don't want to get what's well, rare that we have guests where Dave and I don't say nothing. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm, yeah. I was just, no, 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 I was no, 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 no. Not, don't apologize. No, not, not in that way. No, we're, it's just it's fascinating. Like yeah. And also, look, I, I we just came from a panel. Questions. Over the weekend, we spent right. some time together. Yes. Um, one of the things that's important for you guys to understand is, and we talked about Muhammad Ali at the top of this, um, when you got it in here and you won't let it be repressed, Period. you're going to move your own meter. This is the epitome of that. It just, I, I think Vincent always has blown Dave away and I because the condition doesn't matter as much as the goal. Period. And, and you have never lost who you are, and it's amazing watching how much, not only you grow so fast, the team that now is around you, yes. you know I know the team, Thank you, brother. but sometimes I participate with You're the right. team, <laughs> because, because we're attracted to not just your gift, but to your disposition about it. You, 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 you represent who you are through your craft, and what I find is, and you would know this, that when you're built that way, you hear differently, mm -hmm. you're, you proceed differently, you edit differently, it's like you with mixes. I tell people all the time, Dave mixes till he's happy, exactly. not till you're happy. How else can you do it? Yeah, exactly. well, see, you got to have a high bar, yeah. and, I, and I think it's it's fascinating to watch. Mm, all you. right, so during the homeless period, yes, and homeless has different kinds of connotations. Yes, so some no people doubt. are you can be on the street and not be homeless, right. and you can be on the street and be homeless. Right. Did that serve as inspiration more often than not, or was it just something that? 
you got used to as a condition. How did that process work? So, so when I came to Los Angeles, you know, I, I, uh, I was from Detroit, was there until about uh, 2010, essentially. Mm -hmm. I went to college before that for about a year, mm -hmm. came back. Uh, put out an artist, we had some, some meager success. I mean, independently, she's never seen a label or artist traveling the world to this day still. You know, mm. she's doing incredibly well for herself. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to do more than what I was doing. So I wanted to go to college and I went to Atlanta to go to Morehouse mm. College. And while at Morehouse, majoring in business administration and accounting. So while I'm majoring in business administration, you're learning that accounting equation and you're learning that information. So this information I didn't have before. So as I'm learning this information, they teach me about copyrights and all, all the other long-term assets. And mm -hmm. when I learned that, I'd already had 500 songs in my catalog, and I didn't really learn that lesson until my senior year. So mm -hmm. when I mentioned it, I said, hey, guys, you know, you say a copyright is better than real estate. You say it's 120 years. It's better than any property. I mm -hmm. mean, a great copyright is better than an incredible real estate investment property. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how he's teaching it. And I'm well, you know, I got 500 songs. Mm -hmm. well, what are you doing here is what he says to me. Is that right? And so immediately... You know, I just I was just nominated for another Grammy at that time, and it was for a gospel record that I did with James Fortune. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know what, let me move to L.A., man, you know, and just see what it's So I already factored in homeless. This sure. is the point. My point of the whole story. Right. As an accountant, you're, you're taught to think about the risks. You're taught to think about what it exposure, costs. Exposure, all that. Exposure. So, and I've already factored in homeless. Yeah. I've factored in about, you know, 16. That's the most tactical know. approach to homelessness I've no, ever seen. Because, when you, well, because here it is. When you ever, whenever you leave and sojourn somewhere else to build something, yeah. you know, you might like all the nice names you want to call it, but you right. are homeless. Right, 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 right. Understand right. that. This Absolutely. is not your home. Absolutely. This is, and you don't have anywhere to go. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know and, and the reason, and the reason we're, we're saying that it's also is also enough. because... You're also very smart. Thank you, brother. And the way you approach your craft is something that I think guys like us that have been around mm -hmm. for a while just admire. Thank there's you, a, there's a, there's a, Dave and I are going up to speak at Google, mm -hmm. and we had to come up with a topic. And the topic that we came up with was um, uh, we're going to talk about the humanity in digital. Mm -hmm. And we believe that there's a combination of analog yes. gifts that you combine in the digital space. Period. And that and you approach your life and your craft that way. Because it's all math. It's really uh, all science. Uh -huh. It's a science uh -huh. and you have to count the cost. I, I think the, 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 the important part is that although I factored in 17 months, Dave, uh -huh. of homelessness, that turned into three years. And so no matter yeah, how much, months? I, I factored in about a year and a half, maybe a little longer oh, right. of me being homeless. So I, I figured I would get there before then. You know, right, I figure right, right. I'm, I'm like in a year and a half, I right. could find it, you know, right. I could find the, the check. Right. And it just didn't happen that way. I mean, I got very close at that mo at that mark, and then it crumbled, you know, and it's... But you, know, you also made some really fundamental decisions. Yes. You didn't take publishing deals. Yes. You didn't take certain and, opportunities. And that's the part. So throughout this three years, I'm still writing. You know, I'm, I'm, I never walked into a business meeting without a suit on. Mm -hmm. I never walked into sessions smelling like homeless, mm -hmm. looking like homeless. Mm -hmm. You know, I was always shaved. Mm -hmm. I was always smelling like cologne. Mm -hmm. You know, so they're mm -hmm. like, they, they don't know I'm homeless. Right. You know, I'm, I got a couch here, a friend here, a frat brother here, sometimes sleeping in my car, sometimes sleeping at the beach, sometimes walking up and down Hollywood Boulevard because I had nowhere to go. Wow. And I was so prideful and too prideful to sleep on the concrete mm -hmm. so I would rather walk all night because wow. I might meet somebody that can change this situation right. and that was the way I was thinking you know so and for, still writing and this time. every day I mean every I mean I didn't go to sleep without writing three or four songs because I was homeless it's like bro if you don't want to be homeless this is the model that you've created to change that write songs bro period you know I, I didn't need a publishing deal because publishers you know they don't really help you place records I met too many other people with publishing deals who were unsatisfied right you know, I right. met too much, read too many books, too much information. Right. So at this stage, it's like, you know, all you need is a pipeline. Well, maybe you need to build relationships. Maybe you should actually make some friends, some real friends. It's mm -hmm. not based on what they have or what you can do for them mm -hmm. or what they can do for you. But let's just make some good songs and see what happens. And little by little, you know, I started writing with people in all the publishing houses. So one kid at Sony and one kid at Universal and one kid at Warner. And they're hearing all about all the placements, but they don't believe you. They don't believe you. Like there's people telling me, you might want to sign this kid. You know, right, right, they right. don't believe you until Beyonce puts the song out. And right. now, everybody, man, you know, everybody's how did it happen, bro? Yeah. You know? I don't know. In the conversations, those deals that I turned down, that was a hundred grand or two hundred grand. It's a million dollars. Right. It's a whole another conversation now. Right. You know, just hey. because I was willing to wait. So you you. <laughs> Man, listen. That's kind of, that sounds like some Ali stuff. I, I'm about to close the show. <laughs> like, so, 
believing and, in yourself. And plus, I know your team well. Some people on your team are on my team or yes, on sir. our team. Um, but just in, in being proud of you. Thank you, brother. Um, the idea that you bet the long tail bet. Yes. You went to build the entity. Along the way, you kept your craft up. Yes. Just, let's talk about your workflow for, for a bit. Does melody hit you first? Where where do the songs come from, and how do they come out? Do you play piano? What, yeah, what so, happens? So I am a musician. Let me add to that. Sure. As a as a writer coming up, all you have is your songs and your relationships, mm -hmm. and that's all I saw. Mm -hmm. I didn't have money. I was poor. I was homeless. So mm -hmm. in my mind, money was off the ro off the radar. But you got to remember, I'm an accountant. Right. So when I look at that accounting equation, I see cash, I see equipment, I see inventory, I see all of the different things that are listed under assets, and I see copyrights down here, right. which are all on the same line. I didn't have no cash, but I got 600 songs. Right. I don't right. have no cash, but I got 2,000 songs now. Right, so you got equity. So I got a whole lot of money. Yeah. And that's the way, that's the part. You gotta, you gotta see what you have and what you own very differently. My right. writing process, um, you know, I am a musician, I am a singer, I love when it starts from the music, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. I love when I'm, and, that, and I love when the music don't come from me. I love when I'm vibing in a band and the guitar player starts to lick and it's just dope. It's right. like, bro, that's incredible. Right. Let me add on to that. Let me try to find the wave that you're on, you know? So I love when it's music first, but you know, honestly, most, most recently within like the last two years, it's always been concept first. You know, I believe a song has to be written from the title. You know, mm. that is my personal belief now as I've evolved into what I'm becoming. You know, I think you have to start with the title. Because that, that hook is still fundamental yes. to great music. Period. Forever and Period, ever, bro. forever. Period. Right? This is the top line. And, you know, what is that top line? A top line is really the most important thought in your song. Mm -hmm. Exactly how you spell it out. Mm -hmm. We've built sand castles that washed away. Mm, mm. You know, that says it all. It says the whole song. Right. And and from there, I'm just creatively like a painter would, painting accents around that thought. Mm. But it's we build sandcastles that washed away. Yeah, we may have a problem. Because if we ever unleash him, you and I will be out of a job. He'll, he'll be sitting in all three chairs here. It, yeah, <laughs> right? It'll be yeah. Vincent's place. No, I'll, uh, I'll just take Saturday off. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Come down here and it. <laughs> right. I don't have to pick up my suit. Not at all. Not at all. Hey, man, I'm grateful to be here. You really big, have the respect you got a big, big D brother. on your hat. What well, part man. did uh, Detroit play in your development? Uh, you know what? Development? I, I grew up on the east Everybody side of Detroit. Everybody from Detroit yeah, it's so many always musicians. has Detroit in them. You know, it's like a... It's like a, a culture. It's really a culture that's still there. I mean, when Barry Gordy left Detroit in the 70s, yeah. he took a lot of the, the will to make it from the people. Uh -huh. But he didn't take the talent. He didn't take the ability. Uh -huh. But the will left. Because you got to remember, these people flooded to Detroit from the South right. you know, to get these automotive industry jobs, yes. get these industrial jobs. Yep. This industrial revolution is happening. Yep. And all of a sudden, boom, you shut that down. These people are uneducated. Right. They've never been to school. Right. These are former slaves. Right. They have nothing. And they're lost in Saginaw, Flint, Detroit, mm. Pontiac. And that's just where they are right. in this area. And so that kind of energy, you know, pushes you to do, it's motivation. It's gonna motivate you to go to the left or, or it will motivate right. you yeah. to go to the right. Right. Mm -hmm. And to, to, for me, you know, I was fortunate to have a father for 13 years mm -hmm. who was an incredible voice in my life. He died when I was 13, mm -hmm. but up until that point, you know, I was able to have a, a direction that he pointed me in mm -hmm. that I was able to follow down. And Detroit mm -hmm. is that kind of place, you know? So when he died, the city, he was a big preacher in the city, mm -hmm. which is my point. And so when he died, the city kind of rallied around our family mm. um, and, and really held us together for a short period of time. And then it turned kind of crazy. Mm. I mean, people came and stole everything he had built. Mm. And we went from, you know, affluence to abject poverty. And, at, and from that place at 13, 14, seeing my mom crying and wondering why these people did this to her, in my soul, resilience mm. was built. You know, like she'll never have to look like that again, you know. Wow. And, that, and that's pretty much, you know, and that's from the city, from the east side. It, it built the man that was able to walk in L.A. and live in L.A., you know, the probably the hardest city in the world, you know, probably mm -hmm. second to none because mm -hmm. it's so tricky. See, New York is different. New York is very straight up. You know it's hard. Right. 
from the tip. LA got LA the beaches. Fool you. Yeah, it'll fool you. It'll fool you. Got the beaches, the women, the fun. Uh, and you'll think it's cool and you and, mess and around other, and you be in the jungle, baby. Uh, that's right. And here's the, the other part. Boulevard. Here's the other part you're not talking about is how tough the east side of Detroit Come is. On, brother. Okay. Well, the zip code I'm talking about specifically, 48213, uh -huh. is the side of Detroit that is the, considered the worst zip code in the city of Detroit, which is often called the worst city in America. Can you imagine the environment? Wow. In the worst zip code, in the worst city. And that's where I preached. That's where my church was. That's where I played the musician instruments. That's where I played basketball. That's where I played football. That's where all my family is, where all my cousins are, all my best friends are. That's where I was raised, born and raised. And being in that side of the city and seeing the kind of stuff, I mean, it was a 13-year-old kid two days ago, man. This kid, you know, outside 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night, this man dropped $75, you know, and he dropped $75, the kid picked it up, you know, because he's homeless or broke or poor. He right. just found the money. Instead of the man just getting the money back from the kid, he, he, he suspected the kid stole it from him, kidnapped him, threw him in the back of the car and dropped him off. And that same zip code right down the street murdered. Mm. You know, that's the environment, bro. Mm. So, mm. you know, what, what I find out is people, we get successful and we run to the hills, we run to Calabasas, we run to Willow Hills, mm -hmm. running from places like that. Right. And the only way they're going to change is to see people like me. You know, I came from that for real. You know, so mm -hmm. you have this, this, it's funny, as we we're talking at Urban Network, we we're talking about this word urban that's interesting. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting word mm -hmm. because it, it's a marketed stream of thought, a marketed bundle of songs or concepts that's marketed to this group of people. But unfortunately, on the east side of Detroit, bro, we don't even listen to that kind of music. Mm -hmm. We're from Motown, bro. Mm -hmm. So what kind of music do you think we're listening to? We're not mm -hmm. listening to that. We're not listening to the future, bro. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's not marketed for us. Mm -hmm. But it's called urban, and it's meant to be for those group of people. But I didn't listen to that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes urban is used by people that don't want to use the words they really Come want on, to use. That's what they really <laughs> want to use, bro. But the reality is the real urban market is 90% suburban kids. That's oh, 100%. True. You go to right. Jay-Z concert or Lil Wayne concert, it's a bunch of middle American. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mixed kids Absolutely. for the most part. Absolutely. Mostly white. Absolutely. For the most part, Absolutely so that, when you say urban, it's a culture. It's something very mm -hmm. different than to a me it really body has people. Very little meaning that that urban and as as it applies to music because it's, it's all a, music's urban, all exactly. music's not music. Right. Right. Almost, it's like pop now. It, right? It's just pop a way to popular. separate a certain form of music on radio is what it really is without saying yeah, absolutely. That's a certain it's a category. Of music. It's a category. Yeah. category. Yeah. Yeah. The problem is categories. all the categories are blended now. Yeah. Right. So you might hear something in urban that sounds country. Right. You know, Absolutely or right. hear something in like Adele. Mm -hmm. You know, Absolutely. people don't even know where to put her, but yeah, that's soul music. That? I that's mean, right. that's yeah. Anita Baker, Aretha Franklin. That's soul music, that's as right. soul as it gets. What what instruments do you play? The piano, the organ. Mm. I'm learning the guitar. You okay. know, I want my favorite instrument is the bass. Okay, okay, you know, so, that's coming. Oh come on, you know, I'm coming. a master of the bass. Oh no, I listen. I, have I read no doubt. some. I read a scientific paper that uh, they they did some tests with a bunch of college students and and. And it turns out that humans hear bass as it relates to rhythm and timing than they do high frequencies. I always thought you put the hi-hat in the mix to, to give the feeling of tempo and timing, but it's the bass. That's awesome. Hmm. And, and when you think about the 80s, we used to say things like, turn that bass line into a hook. The bass mm. line has to be a hook. Mm. And uh, I kinda, that's, that's kind of altering the, whole, the way I'm mixing now. I got a question for you. Um, was there a moment that you can share with us where you went from being an amateur to a pro? Mm. What what changed that made you write songs people wanted to pay for as opposed to when you were writing and they didn't want to pay for them? Was That's it a, awesome a slow, gradual accumulation of talents yeah, and experiences or was there one moment you can delineate for the audience that they need to strive for? You know what, I think that moment was the moment when I was not married to the stuff I was creating anymore. When you let go Ooh. of that. I wasn't offended by criticism. Mm. I wasn't mm. offended to go back and try again. Yeah. Like, mm. yo, you don't like it? Okay, cool. You know, I write so many songs, I'm not offended that you don't like it. Mm -hmm. Let me craft this That's deep. for mm -hmm. this. And I, Because before that, I was married to everything I made. Right. Like anybody, a creator, mm -hmm. you love mm -hmm. what you're mm -hmm. making. Yeah. You know, right. this is yeah. my baby. Mixers right. were the poster child for that. Exactly, yeah. you love your mix, Absolutely. man. You know, somebody come, I don't like the mix, why? You know, I'm a professional. You can't tell me anything about listening. Right, mm -hmm. right. You know, so I had to get 
I had this, my little brother who just finished law school is mm -hmm. going to Harvard for the Kennedy School of Government next year. I'm Amazing. so proud of him. Amazing, man. This kid changed my life. I remember I wrote a song and I used to sing it all the time. It was one good song. Mm -hmm. You know, I've had a, a million songs right, at this right, time, right. but this was my first good one. Right, right, and right. And I'm like, this is smash, bro. I'm playing it all day. <laughs> this is smash, baby. And he's like, bro. Turn that song off, bro. Right. You have not made your best song. He's like 17. Is that he right? was so irritated at hearing it so much. And like, go, oh, make another one, bro. Like, you that you that's not your best song. Right. And I was like, I was so mad. Wow. You know, but when I'm sitting in my room, I'm like, I mean, what's so offensive by him telling me right. about him telling me you right. have not made your best song? And that phrase just stuck with me. Yeah. So when I when I really digested that question, um, that 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 phrase. And when you have those moments, or at least when I have them, and I know Dave and I talk about that, you can feel yourself. Oh, yeah. It, you feel it oh, internally, yeah. like yeah. I just went to another level. Yeah. And you know you, it. Sometimes you have to identify what that is. And you, you hold feel. it in, and it still happens. I mean, still I happens. mean it's songs that I, I have that I love, man. I mean, some songs I write, I'm like, man, this is one of my, I know this is going to be special at right. some point. Right. I mean, even Sandcastles, you, you imagine how many people tried to tell me it wasn't finished and it needed to be this and it needed mm -hmm. this and mm -hmm. it was just a piano and vocal, bro, you need to add some drums. And I'm like, that's not what I hear. Bro. Right, 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 right. You know, I hear it this way and it was a blessing to have her establish that what I was hearing is how it should have been. Prepare batters, boss, because we're being schooled. Oh, I'm prepared. Chongor, you got you got a couple questions for our guests? Yeah, this, this is being school. This is yeah. being school time. <laughs> Absolutely. This is this was from uh, Nathan Bodiker. As you were getting out of being homeless, did you find that having a home gave you inspiration for writing songs? You know what? Having a home really was a distraction. Mm. Because mm. I developed a, a stream of thought that really separated me completely from this physical world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. like in my Amazing. mind, I am not here. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? In my mind, I'm focused. I'm building mm -hmm. something that has nothing to do with where I am. So while I was homeless, I found out I was, I found out I was a little more productive. So what I'm trying to do now is create a new balance within this new world mm -hmm. and this new lifestyle. So you don't lose that energy. So edge. I don't lose the energy and the, that groundedness. You know, and maybe it might need to be a small apartment or a really, really small house <laughs> right. or something that just keeps you going like that, you know, but that's right. where I'm at now. Just trying or, to find a new balance. How, how about 20 small houses scattered around Talk the world? Talk about it, baby. <laughs> <laughs> You're rich. So yeah. Give us another one. This is from George Peraza. If you, have, George. <laughs> if you have two songs, how do you differentiate a song that you can stand behind and a song that is just there to help you build your craft? Awesome. So the first thing is you don't ever write a song that is not birthed out of inspiration. Mm, mm -hmm. And we do that all the time. Sometimes we're trying to take some lines and place a record with Nicki or place a record with Drake sure. and you want to get their kind of vibe and get their swag and you, know, and you think that's going to help your career. But the problem is Drake exists. And when they want something that's Drake-ish, they'll probably go to Drake. <laughs> you know, if they want something yeah, that sounds like Trey songs, they'll probably go to Trey. You mm -hmm. know, when it's time for you, just make sure you have you. So the, the biggest part is nobody wanted to buy the songs that I wrote for other people. Mm -hmm. They never buy those. Mm -hmm. They don't even want those. Why? Because you didn't sing those like you sing the ones that's for you. That are for you. Yep. So I decided to sing them all like they're for me. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And only send those in, the ones that they think I want to put out. Like, well, you like this one, Vince? Yeah, this is the one. We want this, bro. Yeah, I thought you did. Yeah, got you. <laughs> Vince, you know, I've that been, kind of I've thing. Been, you are so right. What a great, great piece of information to impart to the audience. I've been blessed to be around a lot of famous people, a I lot of famous people. I can and imagine, and they, a lot of times they'll use my control room to listen to songs that have been submitted for, to them for yeah. records. Yeah. So, and, I, and almost to a person, I'll be sitting there thinking, that sounds like something Bish should use. And, and her comment, no, it sounds too much like me. Mm -hmm. So I have them with Christina. So I have them with, with every, everybody. That, they just sure. do not want the ones that sound obviously for like them. them. Mm -hmm. It's really, really, I would have never thought that had I not seen it firsthand. No, it's crazy, bro. And, and even with this last project with Beyonce, I had another song that I wrote. Um, well, it's three songs that was in the being considered and one of which Big John picked and another one that Teresa loved mm -hmm. but the one the other one that she loved sounded like Beyonce mm -hmm. you know in mm -hmm. fact I strategically co-wrote with a friend of mine who sounds like Beyonce like Beyonce mm -hmm. you know in fact she sang the other song that Big John picked up I'll be dark you know like right. she sounds just like the lady mm -hmm. you know and she's incredible and it's authentic though it's not like she's trying to copy it just happens that they right. sound alike right. and 
you know, it, it didn't it didn't work. It was right. like sounds too much. It's going. She's going. He's going to be nervous. Yeah. Or, and it, that kind of energy around it. So, you know, that that definitely is the truth. All right, loosen up your arm because this is between oh, his loose. bat speed and his As base speed. As a matter of fact, I'm calling um, my friendship with you, okay. my 25-year bond <laughs> that sometimes has been questioned into it. <laughs> <laughs> Just slightly. <laughs> so if I lose this one, I'm I'll blaming it on you. you. No, I'll take it with you. Just like the officiating in the, uh, okay. in the playoffs. Well, let, let's just define it this way. Cleveland Cavaliers... Golden State Warriors. <laughs> I want to be Golden State. No, he right now, he's going. No, so, no Herb, you're going to be so proud of me. All right. Well, I'm, I'm going to get him right off the bat. Are you <laughs> ready for this? Here we go. Batter's box. Charlie Pride. Ooh. Oh, man. Ooh. Ooh. See, I know he's an influence on him, so. Man. How did he influence you? I don't know. Maybe, maybe approach. I'm winning. I think you should stop now, cause you, cause you won that. Now no, the I'm other, hot. Hey, I'm on fire. You're, all right, <laughs> don't, don't slow me down. All right, cool. Hit don't it. slow me down. That's a smash. Norman Whitfield or Smokey Robinson? Mm, good God. Um, both are really, really important to me. You know, I would say Smokey because, for, from his own perspective, he wrote from love, and I think that's the highest, highest foundation in physics. That's, that's the wrong answer. Norman had the edgy stuff. Okay. Cool. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sly Stone and Maurice White. Ooh. Mm. Man, that's a Faustian choice. Man. You know what? I think, you know, just from, we had a conversation before, I'll say yeah. Maurice White, just because of what I learned earlier today about him. I got to say Maurice White. Maurice. Yeah, yeah no doubt. Uh, last one in this vein. Come I got on, five more. I'm lit. I'm ready. Sam Cooke. Mm. Oh, man. Mm. Um, I would have to say uh, definitely one of my favorite artists, voices, and songwriters. Mm. I would have to say, uh, between the changes going to come and uh, 16, she was only 16. Chain Gang. Ugh. Chain Gang was incredible. But Ugh. 16 was so dope because he was a kid. Right. I didn't even realize he was a kid. When I'm listening to it, I'm like, this kid was a kid. And this what is a smash. You know, so 16. OK. Um, synthesizers. Oh, man. Um, you know what? You know what I love so much. This VST world is is really growing, mm -hmm. and the sounds that's coming out of these worlds are ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Omnisphere is something that I absolutely love mm -hmm. more than anything now. Just I know because I'm winning, so I'm gonna be a little magnanimous. Short answers, please. <laughs> <laughs> Mook. <There you> <laughs> Make another day. Got it. Inspiration. Oh man, um, life, people. Yeah. People for sure. Yeah. Tempo. Heartbeat. You know, I, I learned this. I started oh, doing that this. Thought. I, I know this is going to be great. Say, Heartbeat, I, I, I yes. can see you win it. I just want to hear that yes. answer. Favorite blue-eyed soul singer? John Mayer. Oh, mm -hmm. God, you lose. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I love none. <laughs> did, did I, did I or Michael McDonald, on? if you want somebody there to order. You know, yeah, Michael McDonald. Yeah, John John I like John Mayer. Um, I'm a guitar player. I got to like him. What one tool would you miss the most and and use in your creative process if it was gone from you? Oh my God, the w the willingness to listen, bro. Mm. The ears, listening, mm. man. Tear it up. I told you. Between the bat speed and the bass speed, it's it's, it's very. He's good, Herb. He's good. No, it's very good. He's it's, good. That's a... I was I, I had him for about two questions. Three. Well. Three was three was tough. The baseball, three. Co the baseball commissioner texted me, and they just put him on the All Star team hey, just based on that. Lit. So, so tell, tell me about the the tempo thing. Tempo, uh, heartbeat. heartbeat. I said that because you know one day I was trying to it's write like a song. 60, 70 beats a minute. It's right where it is. I didn't uh -huh. know that though, because right. as I'm listening, it depends on where you are. Sometimes you're a little bit more excited, mm -hmm. but just try it. I mean, if you want, because that's really all you need. You know who else says that? Who? Aerosmith, Steven Tyler. Oh, that's incredible. He was like, Levels. there is, and he he compared it actually to sex. And that's, that's the vibration. That's the, it is. That is the groove. It is. Speaking yeah. of sex, Changor. Ooh. In the dance world. <laughs> Do you really want to draw that in correlation? The, in the, in the, um, in the pop world, 60 would be a ballad, but 60 and 60, 120 in the dance world. I wonder if that's where 120 in the dance world came from, twice the heartbeat. Maybe, mm. maybe. Go, go experiment with that Super report dope. next week. Cool. <laughs> um, time flies. Scientist, man. That's awesome, brother. <laughs> time flies. I know you have a photo shoot, and we're making you late. 
Um, if you think this is your last visit here, it is not. <laughs> it is not. Bro. It is not. Um, there's a lot more to be done. What we didn't touch on, we'll do it another show, is you believe like we believe in education. Yes. Um, you do panels. You, you network seriously. Yes. You're a people person. Yes, sir. And it informs your creativity. No doubt. The kind of people, good and bad. Yes, sir. Correct? Yes, sir. Um, I, you know, look, this is an hour where we got a chance to just listen, and, 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 and it was preaching. Yeah. And it was from the place where creativity comes from and where you can just inspire and reach. So yeah. I'll let, what's that? What are you uh, say? I'll say it for the wrap up. Okay, so I'm going to let Dave wrap it up. But I just want to tell you that from a lot of people who care about you, um, we care about you um, not because of your gifts, because of who you are as a person, man. Thank you, and that is something our industry needs and it's really rare. So it I'm is buff. a pleasure. You know how Thank we you are. Big bro. You know how oh, we man. are, man. Yes, sir. Dave, take us home. Um, Good guys finish last, right? Um, maybe they don't. One of my favorite things about doing Pensada's Place is sitting across from Herb and, and a guest every week and really realizing that good guys do finish first yeah. more often than not. And if you go back and look at our episodes, that's a thread you'll see throughout those episodes. Um, we've mentioned a few names today. Uh, I was talking to someone earlier in the week and I got a little a little pissy because he didn't know the names that we stand on their shoulders of, which was a horribly constructed sentence, but you know what I mean. Um, we need to know whose shoulders we stand on, and we talked about Norman Whitfield. We talked about some people you might not have heard. Look up these names because we draw inspiration from those and we wouldn't be here. Uh, we mentioned uh, Muhammad Ali. That's, that's a shoulder that we all stand on, a pair of shoulders. So giving you a little bit of an assignment, um, and um, I really like it that you got to see a good guy finish first. Good night. Very much first. <laughs> Mic drop, baby. See you guys.